though, interestingly, as I was writing the book, I was thinking a bit about the history of pandemics because it was one of those things that we tend not to plan for. Um, but I didn't actually write about it really in the book. It was sort of more in the back of my head. And, you know, early on in the pandemic, um, as you probably remember, it became really clear that there were some countries that had planned well for future pandemics or epidemics like Taiwan or South Korea. And those were the countries that were starting to deal with it very well. And then there were other countries like the United States, which had dismantled their long-term pandemic planning programs and things like that. And they're the ones that were really failing. So when the book came out, it was immediately clear to me on some level that even though the pandemic was all about dealing with an immediate crisis, it clearly also had a relevance for long-term public policy in healthcare. Yeah. But then what happened, which I think was really interesting, was that I started seeing lots of discussions around where, like in governments and businesses or, or activist movements, people were taking this strange moment where time had kind of stopped to stand back and look at a bigger picture. So you get cities like Paris saying, okay, let's take this COVID moment to rethink what a city is. Let's close roads, turn them into bicycle paths, turn them into parks, that kind of thing. And I think in a way, something like that was also happening to people or some people on an individual level. It was a moment to kind of reassess life. Not always for the long term, maybe it was about family relationships and things like that. So it was a strange moment for a book to come out. But, you know, I think, strangely enough, it helped us step out of the short term cycles that we're normally caught in. There was enough time for people to read and think and debate these big issues like where is our civilization going in the long term? 